Okay, we're going to be doing percents. Okay, an alert. You will be translating English words into algebraic equations. You have been warned. What percent of 40 is 2.5? We've got what percent. Anytime in the algebra when you don't know what something is, you use a variable. So this time we're going to use the variable of x. And of, of, what operation does of indicate to you? Of indicates multiplication. Then we write 40. Is in algebra is equals. And then you've got 2.5. So we translated this English question into an algebraic equation. Now I like to write it as 40x equals 2.5. I like to have the number in front of the variable. But then we've got an equation that we need to solve. We draw a line. We divide by 40 on both sides because the opposite of multiplying by 40 is dividing by 40. Draw the line to indicate the end of the step. The 40s go away because they become a 1 equals and 2.5 divided by 40 is 0 0.0625. But the question was what percent? So we have to tr translate this into a percent. So we go over 1, 2 places and that gives us 6.25%. 40 is, six, I mean 2.5 is 6.25% of 40. What percent of 84 is 63? Once again, we'll put our variable here. This time I'm using a Y. All of indicates multiplication. 84 is is equals 63. Then we come down here and we've got 84Y equals 63. Draw a line, divide by 84 on both sides. And we get y equals 0.75. We move the decimal over one, two places, and we get 75%. Very important that if it asks you what percent, that you translate your decimal into a percent, okay? All right, now it's your turn. You try this one, pause the video, and then, um, excuse me, pause the video, try this one, and get back to me. Okay. You should have put in a variable. You should have put a variable here. Multiplication there. Twenty-five is means equals and ten. Did you do that? Did you have twenty-five x equals ten? Okay. Our step now was to divide by twenty-five on both sides because the opposite of multiplying by twenty-five is to divide by twenty-five, and we get x equals point four. We change that into a percent by moving the decimal over one, two places. We fill in our placeholder zero, and we get 40%. Okay, what is 30% of 60? So this, is this is moved around a little bit, so let's see what we've got. What x is equals 30.3 because we moved the, to change 30% into a decimal, we moved the decimal over one, two places to the left. So 0.3 of means multiplication. I'm going to put it as a parentheses this time, times 60. So now we work this out. We get x. It's just a matter of simplifying this one. x equals 0.3 times 60 is 18. What? We translate as x is is equals 15%. We move the decimal over one, two places. It's 0.15 of 180. So that gives us x equals 0.15 times 180 is 27. Your turn. Pause the video, try this one, and then get back to me and we'll see how you did. Okay, so we've got what, and this time we're going to let our variable be, let's say, uh, a b. b is, that's an equal sign, and we change the 120% to a decimal by moving the decimal point one, two places to the left. That gives us 1.2 of means multiplication, 50. 
So that gives us B equals 1.2 times 50 gives us 60. So B equals 60. 60 is 120% of 50. Okay, now 125% of what number is 17.5? We move the decimal two places to the left to change it to a decimal. So that's 1.25. All of indicates multiplication, right? Of what number? X is 17.5. So we divide by 1.25 on both sides. Let's not forget the line. Because remember, you've got to do what you do to one side of the line, you've got to do to the other side of the line. So divide by 1.25. and we get x equals 14. Translating English into algebra, 18% of what number is 36? Let's move the decimal two places to the left and we get 0.18. All of indicates multiplication of what number? x is 36. So we divide by 0.18 on one side of the equal sign, divide by 0.18 on the other side, and that gives us x equals 200. I believe that it is your turn now. So try, pause the video and try this one, and then come back to me and we'll see how you did. So we translate this into a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left and that gives us 0.15. All of indicates multiplication of what number is 12. So 15% of what number is 12? We divide both sides by 0.15. Divide both sides by 0.15 and we get x equals 80. Did you get that? I hope so. Because I hope you're right and I hope I'm right. A dress shirt that normally costs $38.50 is on sale for 30% off. What is the sale price of the shirt? Now how do you find a sales price? Okay. The way you find a sales price is the regular price minus the discount equals the sale price. Okay, so we've got the regular price minus the discount equals the sales price. So our regular price is $38.50. Our discount is 30% or 0.30 30% of what? 30% of the regular price of 38.50 equals our sales price which we don't know. So what we've got to find out is what is 30% of 38.50. So we go 38.50 times 0.3 38.5 times 0.3 and that gives us $11.55 so we go 38.50 minus 11.55 and we get $26.95 Okay, $26.95 is the sale price of the shirt. Now, I want to show you a different way to do this. And if you're more comfortable with it, you can use it because it, it eliminates a step. Now if, let me get a different marker. If the regular price of a shirt is the whole price of the shirt, that would represent 100%. 
of the cost. And we're taking off 30%. So that leaves us with 70%. So the sale price is 70% of the regular price. So what we can do is we can just say our sales price or our sale price is equal to 70% of the regular price. And then we can multiply that out, 0.7 times 3850. And I bet you can't guess what we're going to get. We get $26.95. So two ways to do it. You can get the 30% discount and subtract it from the regular price and that gives you the sale price. Or you can find out the remaining amount, the remaining percent, which is 70%, and multiply that times the regular price and you get your sales price. All right, let's move on to the next one. It's your turn. A family sells a car to a dealership for 60% less than they paid for it. They paid $9,000 for the car. For what price did they sell the car? Okay, now before I let you take your turn, for what price did they sell the car? What does that indicate to you the, the unknown is going to be? For what price did they sell the car? X is the price they sold the car for. All right, so they they paid 60%, and remember, I mean, they sold it for 60% less, so that's 0.6, and they paid 9,000 for the car. All right, pause the video, try this, and then come back to me. All right, for what price did they sell the car? They sold it for 60% less. So that means that they, they took 60% of the price off the regular price. So that means they went 9,000 minus 60% of 9,000. And 60% of 9000 is $5,400, so that means we go 9000 minus 5400 and we get 3600 So they sold the car for $3,600. Now, the alternative way that I told you about just a second ago is if they sold it for 60% less, that means they actually got 40% of the price of the car, okay? So that means you can go 9,000 times 40% equals 3,600. Either way is fine. The way that you understand it best is the way that you should do it. Now we're going to do simple interest. Simple interest is interest that you earn only on the principal in an account. This is, this is money, okay? This is money that you're earning on a, a amount of cash that you put into the bank or, or into some kind of loan that you get, give to somebody. But simple interest, and that means there's another kind of interest, but you're just not going to learn that right now. Simple interest is interest you earn only on the principal in an account. The principal is the amount that you deposited initially in your account. For example, you open an account at the bank and you put in $400. That $400 is the principal in your account, okay? This is what you started with. The simple interest formula is I equals PRT, where the I is interest, the P is principal, times the rate, times the time. So interest equals principal times rate times time. So if you invest 
at a simple interest rate of 3.5% per year for three years, the simple interest you earn is, you got 50, I mean, I equals the principal, $50, times the rate, which is 3.5%, and remember we changed it to point, move the decimal two places to the left, so that's 0.035, times three years and we get five dollars and twenty-five cents so that means if you put fifty dollars in the bank at a rate of three point five percent at for three years after those three years you'll have earned five dollars and twenty-five cents which means that you had the fifty dollars that you started with plus the five dollars and twenty-five cents and now you've got fifty-five dollars and 25 cents. Your turn. You deposited $840 in a savings account that earns a simple interest rate of 4.5 percent per year. You want to keep the money in the account for four years. How much interest will you earn? Remember the formula is interest equals principal times rate times time. Remember the principal is the initial amount that you deposited. The rate is the percent that you earn per year and the time is the length of time that you keep it in the account. So pause the video, get an answer, and then come back to me please. So we have interest equals principal times rate times time. So this will be interest equals principal, 840, times the rate, which is 0.045, times the time, which is four years. So that gives us interest equals $151.20. So you will have earned $151.20.